Hi, Fred from Fred's Lab. A new update video. And this one is about how to make a simple instrument using OPA. So we're gonna see together all the required steps to make this simple instrument so you can build it yourself. Let's get it started. The project rough idea is building a controller board to play notes with OPA. For this, we will use nails as cheap and end detached sensors. Let's write down our bill of materials. We need a wood plank, a few nails, take rather big ones, the same amount of 10 mega ohm resistors, crocodile clips, and regular wires and a domino strip. And go! So how does this nail board controller works? To detect a finger touching a nail, we will drive a tiny current in the human body. The current flows from the plus 5 volt power supply through very strong resistors attached to each nail. There must be a special nail connected to ground so the current can flow back to the Arduino. Current sensing is done on every nail to detect individual finger contact. When you touch at least two nails, a nut nail and a ground nail, current flows through your body. And the nail voltage, which used to be plus 5 volt, which is true in computer logic, immediately drops down to zero, which is false in computer logic, as soon as you make the connection. After trying the controller, I decided to add another toggle nail for the left end and connect the horizontal nail to ground. Well, that's time to program now, so let's open our Arduino development environment. And make it bigger. So the first thing we have to do is to include the OPA library into our sketch. And this you can do it with the help of the sketch menu. In the sketch menu you will find include library and you should have your OPA library if it's properly installed. What it adds, it's a new line at the beginning of our sketch, which is include opa.h, and this opa.h file provides us all the functions that we need to communicate with the OPA shield. Now we have to create the OPA object. That's it. We still need to initialize the communication with OPA, and this we can do it in the setup function. That's it. Now we can configure the Arduino pins so they map with our nailed board. So our nails are connected from pin 8 to pin 13 actually. This can be done with the function pin mode. And they all have to be inputs.
or write. Now that our pins are configured and the OPA modules prepared, we can play a note. So let's call the OPA not on function. We need a program number. And the node index. So let's use node 60, which is a C. If you want to have more information about node numbers, have a look at the MIDI documentation because they match it. Note is on now, we're gonna wait sometimes. Let's say one second and switch it off. What these few lines do is switching on the node 60 on program 0, wait for a second and switch it off. Let's check the configuration of our tool and transfer this program to our Arduino. So we have an Arduino Uno board, that's correct. And it's connected to COM18, that's also correct. We can verify our sketch here and save it. Now we have a look at the bottom of our window. Here we should be able to see there are some errors, and apparently they are known. We can transfer the sketch to the Arduino. So the Note 60 seems to play with the default program, which is just a sine wave. If we want to disable the playback, we just command this section out. and transfer the sketch again. We want to have more interesting sound than just a sine wave, so let's load one stored program. And we can do that in the setup function. The command load program allows you to load a program from the internal memory. So we need to specify where does the program go and from which slot the program is loaded. Our program will go to OPA program 0. And it comes from the first slot. Remember that programs can be prepared and stored with the OPA editor, but they can also be crafted using Arduino. Let's command out the not playing instruction and hear the new notes. That's already more interesting. It's important to start with simple things first. So next step is to trigger a note with the nail. We need to read the nail state and we're going to use the digital read function for that. Since we need to send note on a note off event, we need to remember what's the state of the nail, so let's create a variable for that. So this will store the previous nail state, and we start with only one. We can now read the new nail state. And compare it to the previous one. In that case, when the new nail state is different from the previous one, we're going to either send a not on or a not off event, depending on the state of the nail. And now we need to remember the new state of the nail.
So let's try this sketch now. You've heard that the action is reversed, so when we touch a nail, we make a contact to the ground, and the logic level is zero, so we need to change that. We can just invert the reading state. And try it again. When I touch the nail, it plays a note. Now that this works with one nail, we can do that for the five others. So the first thing to do is to change the nail variable to be a table. This will store the six nail states. And we can scan all the nails together. We also need to attach a different node to each nail. That should do the job. So let's try that. Not bad, but it would be better if we could play some kind of scale. So let's program a scale for this. We will only make a 5 tone scale because I want to keep the last nail for another purpose. We can also make it constant. and use that for picking up the notes. Let's try that. But what about using the last nail to transpose the scale? So we're going to do that now. So let's add a second set of values. And we need a variable to store what's the current scale. Let's call it S. The last nail will toggle the scale. In order that we have no problem when we switch from one scale to another, let's mute the notes which are already played in the previous scale. And we can use the function all notes off.
but I think we could make it even more dramatic by playing the fundamental every time we change the scale. So let's do that. So let's pick the fundamental. But let's make it one octave lower. And add another one, one octave lower. Let's try that. That's another use of the OPA shield, but you can do much better. Next step would be to add some analog sensors to control engine parameters, and we can see that in the next video. I hope you enjoyed the video, and please continue to show your support on the Kickstarter page. Thanks, and see you next time.